Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're continuing our conversation around business continuity management and specifically element definitions. This is something you need to define when you're setting up business continuity management. If you stop watching in the next 30 seconds, here's your big takeaway. Element definitions are letting you define what exactly in your configuration management database, your CMDB, that you're gonna bring into business continuity management and associate with your business impact analysis and associate with your business continuity plans. What's that look like here? Well, on the dashboard, you can already see I've got some processes, some business applications that are showing on the dashboard. Those are the predefined elements. They also show up in the business impact analysis if you see here, I've got a details tab. We're gonna have a video on this whole feature business impact analysis, but look at this applies to. I've got customer portals. So I can go in and I can say for this impact analysis, I'm gonna pick up something from the CMDB. And rather than seeing the 15,000 things that are in there, I can pick out, pick out something that has been pre-selected, defined as an element that we wanna associate with our business impact analysis. Um, if I go to this continuity plan on the details tab for that, I do not have reference to a configuration item or an element definition. On our continuity plan, it comes from our business impact analysis, or we can add them manually, and it shows up under scope. So these are the element definitions for accounts payable, some departments that are showing up under scope, and they are originating from the business impact analysis that you can see there. Now notice, I can't actually add anything to this because it hasn't been, or it's already been approved. So we can't change this continuity plan once it's been approved. We'll cover continuity plans in full here soon, but let me show you that it is possible to add scope to a draft continuity plan and here you can see I can come in and select something else from the CMDB that's been predefined. That's where they show up in the application. So what are they? I'm gonna hop over to my list view here and I've got all the element definitions that are set up in my demo environment. I've got 21 of them here and you can see along the left hand side here they all kind of make sense right? So I've got applications, I got business capabilities and processes, data centers, facilities, employees themselves, and then you specify, okay, where are these coming from? Now I know I said CMDB like a dozen times before, but notice we can even pull in things from places like SysUser, um, there's a business unit table, so it's different things coming from different places. If we open up, let's open up a Windows Server. So this is looking at the table CMDB underscore CI underscore Windows Server. So it's very specific on what it's grabbing. Um, and then we're going to pull in certain fields so that when um, the poor business continuity managers coming in here, they're going to see the name and the OS version. They're not going to see all the that hundreds of other attributes associated with that configuration item. So we're basically kind of providing a sterile or clean lens into the CMDB to let the business continuity managers, program managers, viewers do their job. One last thing before we go here, let's click the new button and show if we were to start from scratch with nothing in there, what does that look like? We'll just do demo for the world. And notice here that I can select from all the different kinds of tables in the system. I'm trying to think of one real quick that might not be in here. Let's say a story. Uh, let's just see if a story is available for us to select um, from the list of tables. Again, it should let me pick anything except protected tables in the system, like your journal fields and stuff like that. And we'd be able to bring these into our configuration management, uh, or our business continuity management. So there you see, I've got story and I've got story dependencies. So we're basically just searching a table and then we're adding different fields from that table. Now those fields, again, kind of make it clean for the uh, business continuity manager or program manager to come in and just see the things that they need to see. So we can be selective about what we add there as far as fields. I won't slow this down by doing that. But then most importantly, I can set some conditions. Even when we narrow this down to a particular table or a particular class of configuration items, you still may want to come in here and filter that, hey, active is true or um, the production you know, status, I spelled that right. Um, uh, I think maybe it's under status. Yeah, status is, you know, that's production or green, yellow, red or something. Oh, we're looking at stories, that's right. So you can even come in and add filters, again, making this more relevant for those people that are coming in here to do their job in business continuity management. So that is element definitions. That's where they live in business continuity management. It's where you define them and edit them. I did that all through the workspace. So again, bringing home that workspace is really where everything starts. In the future, we're gonna go through those business impact analysis, those continuity plans and exercises and events in, in detail. So hopefully this was helpful. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please subscribe, please like, 
share it with somebody who you think might be interested in configuring business continuity management. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.